All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and man, big news, man. A lot of big news today. It's been reported that commanders have a list of offensive coordinators that they're targeting already, which they should, of course. But Pat Shermer is one of them. He's one of their top priorities to be our next offensive coordinator. And I want to talk about why that could potentially be a great idea, especially in a year like this where QB1 could potentially be Sam Howe. We should bring in a quarterback whisperer, a guy that has a proven history of developing quarterbacks or even getting the most out of quarterbacks when he's there and he's their QB's coach or he's the offensive coordinator that's the best year they've had in their career type of stuff Pat Shermer is one of those guys you can definitely argue that he's a QB whisperer and I want to dive into his history as a QB's coach and an offensive coordinator and his proven track record of making quarterbacks better than they normally are and I feel like he would be a great fit for Sam Howell I feel like he would be a home run higher as offensive coordinator he may not necessarily be the best play caller but when it comes to developing young quarterbacks or getting the best out of even veteran quarterbacks like i already said he's one of those guys he's one of them ones so we got to talk about pat Shermer. i also want to talk a little bit about ken zam peace and his history with quarterbacks as well at least the positive side of it and the non-commander side of it and why i feel like him and pat Shermer together can end up being a great duo for sam howell who again is projected to be our qb1 going into this 2023 season but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure you pull up every Sunday, including this Sunday, where I do live streams, off-season live streams. I open up the phone lines so y'all can call in. You give your opinions. You make your statements about everything. For agency draft, Sam Howell being QB1, Scott Turner getting fired, our next offensive coordinator potentially being Pat Shermer, all of that type of stuff, man. Make sure y'all pull up with all your opinions, good or bad, and we're going to talk about all of that while watching playoff games together this Sunday and multiple Sundays throughout this offseason and of course stay tuned for all of the content like I said I'm out here putting out like two to three videos a day but there's so much stuff that I got to cover so many film sessions mock drafts and things like that I really need to be doing like five videos a day I just don't have the time to so make sure y'all stay tuned without further ado let's get it All right, so Nikki Javala tweeted out, the commanders are getting a list together for the offensive coordinator candidates. Jim Caldwell was on the list, who I already did a video on. He declined because he's pursuing a head coach and opportunity. I was like, mm, is that the only reason? Even if he was looking for an offensive coordinator job, would he have been coming here with all of the chaos with Ron Rivera potentially this being his last year, Martin Mayhew this being his last year, everybody in the organization this potentially being their last year with new ownership coming in in March or April, even Jason Wright may not be safe. And so who would want to come into the situation again, unless like the scenario I talked about where we bring in a guy, maybe like a Jim Caldwell, who's looking for a head coach and opportunity or Eric B who seems to not be able to get a head coach and opportunity or an offensive coordinator opportunity anywhere outside of Kansas City. You come here for one year, you prove to the new owner that you deserve to be here and maybe you get promoted to head coach from offensive coordinator and the new owner handpicks you to be the next head coach over Rivera, gets rid of Rivera and all of those guys. And now you're the head coach for a new owner. And he's going to do everything thing to help you succeed it's like the super high risk high reward opportunity right now because the commanders are as chaotic as it gets no definitive qb1 even though they say it somehow no definitive head coach at this point i mean we don't know if Ron Rivera is going to make it past the 2023 season. No definitive defensive coordinator. Right now, we don't even know who the owner is just yet. The offensive coordinator would get here before the new owner gets here. And that just has to be the most chaotic situation ever. New GM, all of that is on the line. But at the same time, if you go and tough it out through the scenario and you're the flower that grows through the concrete, then you could potentially be the head coach of a really talented team with guys like Terry McLaurin, Jonathan Allen, and all the talent we have, and a new owner that's going to be willing to give you everything you need to succeed. So it's probably the highest risk, highest reward opportunity for an offensive coordinator to take the job right now. But still, I just think Jim Caldwell looked and was like, nah, I'm good. Even if I was looking for a offensive coordinator, I'm good. I'm going to say thanks, but no thanks. I'm looking for head coach opportunity.
opportunities. But I think even if he was looking for offensive coordinator, we were not on his list. Even though he is attached to this organization, of course he has ties to Martin Mayhew and things like that with Martin Mayhew's days as being a GM for the Lions. But I just don't think that would have worked out either way. But apparently, Nikki Javala tweeted that Pat Shermer is also a candidate per sources. An important factor is a record of developing young quarterbacks. And I love the fact that based on their offensive coordinator search so far, that they're looking for guys that develop young quarterbacks to get the most out of quarterbacks whether they're young or a veteran and that's really good i feel like you need to do everything you can do to make sure sam howell succeeds i think you give them every chance that you can you build the offensive line for them you get them a quarterback friendly offensive coordinator a great passing game coordinator to develop a great offense that brings out the best in them you do everything you can you pour all your resources into making sam howell the guy because again like i talked about in my previous video if sam howell doesn't work out you're in position to potentially get caleb williams drake may or quinn ewers and then now all of the assets and capital money draft picks you put into building a great team around sam howell that's the the same team that you have ready to, to just simply plop Caleb Williams into and now he has the O-line he needs the receivers and the defense and the, and the offensive coordinator the QB whisper developing QBs type of offensive coordinator ready to make him great so I just feel like you can't miss with the scenario now granted 2023 can end up being a sacrifice season a pointless season as far as wins go but as far as getting ready for the next quarterback our franchise quarterback either Sam Howell is great because you built around him you got him the right offensive coordinator or Sam Howell fails you have everything you need for the next quarterback to succeed already in place for him offensive line again offensive coordinator receivers weapons all of that type of stuff you do that for sam howell if sam howell doesn't work out you just simply take all of that and apply it to the next quarterback but let's get into pat sherman man because i think this is really interesting and pat sherman has a rich history man i mean he was a former browns eagles interim wise and giants head coach I mean, he's pretty much been everywhere and he didn't even coach this last season his last job in the nfl was the Denver Broncos offensive coordinator from 2020 to 2021. He was a QB's coach for the Eagles from 2002 to 2008. And Ron Rivera was on the Eagles coaching staff as a linebackers coach from 1993 to 2003. So that's where they intersected. They were together for like a year or two. Very brief amount of time, but that's where they crossed paths. And you know Rivera, man, he's always going to try to bring in somebody whose hand he's already shaken and he's already worked with, even if they weren't that close. That's just who Rivera is. Super loyal. He keeps his circle tight. You know what I'm saying? With all all of the commander players we brought in the commander coaching staff and stuff like that so i'm not surprised man so let's run down pat sherman's history and why this may end up being a good idea all right so for the philadelphia eagles he was with them from 2002 to 2008 like i already mentioned who was their quarterback donovan mcnabb and he was a three-time pro bowler under Shermer. under Shermer, remember donovan mcnabb early on was known as like a, only like a dual threat guy and couldn't really be like a pocket passer Shermer got him to turn into a great pocket passer and maybe mcnabb help create Pat Shermer's view on quarterbacks because maybe because of McNabb's athleticism and his dual threat ability that opened Pat Shermer up to liking more mobile quarterbacks and dual threat quarterbacks I think they both helped each other he helped McNabb become a better pocket passer and then McNabb helped Pat Shermer learn how to develop an offense and, and utilize a, a quarterback's athletic gifts because at first Pat Shermer was just purely pocket passer McNabb got him out of that and opened his eyes a little bit I feel like they both benefited from that relationship and then Sam Bradford with the St. Louis Rams in 2010 also with the philadelphia eagles in 2015 and the minnesota vikings in 2016 and 2017 i mean he's had to deal with sam bradford in several places i feel sorry for him but at the same time when he had sam bradford with the rams in 2010 he had him as the nfl's offensive rookie of the year so the really the only good season we've ever seen from sam bradford came from under pat Shermer. now granted pat Shermer's also had sam bradford in other situations other times but the time that sam bradford was at his best was 2010 and pat Shermer had him out there looking like something Bradford passed for 3,512 yards and 18 touchdowns with 16 interceptions as a rookie but then Shermer left to take the Cleveland Browns head coaching job the following season and then that's where Sam Bradford just went downhill just drastically downhill and never recovered even when Pat Shermer's got his hands on him again for the Eagles and the Vikings then the Cleveland Browns 2011-2012 season he had Colt McCoy and that's when Colt McCoy had a career high season and it was under Pat Shermer. His best season as a quarterback throughout his career going everywhere, including with us, was under Pat Shermer. Pat Shermer got more out of Colt McCoy than anybody else ever could. 
outside of college, of course. The year prior to Pat Shermer getting there, the Browns selected Colt McCoy in the third round of the draft. Then Shermer got there as head coach the next year, and then he and GM Tom Heckert decided to focus mostly on the defensive side of the ball in the draft. And then they released Jake DeLome as training camp started. And then the decision was to let McCoy compete with Seneca Wallace and Thad Lewis for the starting job. Then McCoy won the gig and would go in the post the best statistical season of his career. There's a clear theme already, and we're not even done, of quarterbacks having their career years under Pat Shermer. And I feel like that could easily benefit a Sam Howell. But under Pat Shermer, Colt McCoy started 13 games, had 2,733 passing yards, 14 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Not great numbers, but that's the bet Colt McCoy has ever given anybody, and that was under Pat Shermer. And then with the Browns again in 2012, Brandon Whedon. He had a career high season in 2012 under Pat Shermer. The only season that he even looked pretty decent that looked any type of good was under Pat Shermer. And then Case Keenum in 2017 with the Minnesota Vikings. Pat Shermer got that guy to lead them to the NFC Conference game in the playoffs. Remember that? Case Keenum made it that far with the Vikings. That was under Pat Shermer. Case Keenum may not have had his best statistical season, but he had his most accomplished season under Pat Shermer for sure. They had that Minneapolis miracle in the divisional round of the playoffs versus the New Orleans Saints when Keenum hits the Stephon Diggs for a 61-yard touchdown pass with only 10 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And that's when they advanced to the NFC title game. Now, they would end up getting beat down by the Eagles after that. But, again, that's the best season and most notable season that Case Keenum's ever had. And I just feel sorry for Pat Shermer because he just hasn't had a long track record of being given great quarterbacks with a lot of talent anyway. He just gets the most out of these average guys. Imagine what he could do with a Sam Howe with the deep ball accuracy that we saw and the mobility that we saw from him in that Cowboys game. Moving on, Eli Manning for the New York Giants 2018-2019 seasons. And there was a lot of things to take from this season under Pat Shermer, but most notably, Eli Manning had a career high in completion percentage under Pat Shermer. He completed a 66% of his passes while throwing for 4,299 yards, 21 touchdowns, and only 11 interceptions. Arguably his most productive year of the season, and again, it's just a straight up fact that that's when he had his highest completion percentage out of any season that he's ever been a quarterback, even the seasons that we won in the Super Bowl. And then his most recent good work that he did was with Daniel Jones, his rookie season for the New York Giants in 2019. They brought him in as a very raw quarterback, and the Daniel Jones that that we know today who's actually a pretty decent quarterback and better than I thought he would end up being Pat Shermer laid the foundation for that he had Daniel Jones out here setting multiple rookie passing records he had Daniel Jones winning the NFC offensive player of the week week three and week 16 of that season not offensive rookie of the week offensive player of the week twice in one season as Daniel Jones as a rookie he had three different games with at least four passing touchdowns and he finished his rookie season with 3,027 yards 24 touchdowns and only 12 interceptions i mean he had daniel jones out here looking crazy if daniel jones had started all 16 games he may have broken the all-time rookie pass and touchdown record Baker mayfield broke it the year prior with 27 which eclipsed peyton manning in 1998 and russell wilson in 2012 with 26 again daniel jones had 24 and he didn't even play all 16 games of the season daniel jones had one of the most impressive rookie quarterback seasons of all time under pat Shermer, and i just feel like he's been dealt a terrible hand over and over again and you can argue Sam Howell is the most naturally talented quarterback that he may deal with as far as like a blend of arm strength deep ball accuracy mobility already technically sound in a lot of ways I feel like Sam Howell's biggest weaknesses right now are his footwork and that's going to affect his accuracy but even beyond that you saw those deep balls he was throwing so Pat Shermer honestly this may be the best ball of clay he's ever been handed to basically just turn this into a masterpiece Sam Howell could potentially be a great quarterback under Pat Shermer and I think the commanders should do what they can to bring him in but at the same time for reasons I've already explained in several different videos and even briefly in this video I just don't really see Pat Shermer wanting to come here and deal with everything that we got going on especially with him being a QB whisperer and you're out here saying in your press conference that you want us to run a two to one run pass ratio you're never gonna get a Pat Shermer to come here to do that so I'm assuming that was just them bluffing and they were just saying that just to say it they were just talking out the side of their neck i don't know because i'm assuming if you want a pat Shermer, you know he's going to come in here and be extremely qb friendly and sam howe's going to go out here slinging the ball around and that's why i want pat Shermer because i want sam howe to throw the ball around like 30 times a game it's 2023 man it's not 1980 you got to be able to throw the ball to win like i've already said several times the top three running backs in the nfl did not make the playoffs the top five quarterbacks did the top 10 out of 11 
passing attacks in the NFL, according to DVOA, all made the playoffs. 10 of the top 11 passing offenses in the NFL all made the playoffs. It's a passing league. So if, you, if you're even interested in bringing in a Jim Caldwell or Pat Shermer, I'm assuming that you're completely going against what you just said in that press conference recently. And I'm happy to hear that, but I just don't understand why you said that two to one run pass ratio anyway, because you're clearly not looking for that in an offensive coordinator. Because if you're bringing in Pat Shermer, you're expecting Sam Howell to go out there and win you some games with his legs and his arm. And everything else is secondary. And I think Sam Howell has the talent to do that. And I think Pat Shermer could be a great idea to get that out of him. I'm really excited about this potential list of offensive coordinators getting leaked and to hear that Pat Shermer is one of them I think that's a great idea for us especially if we're just going to get a one-year rental he just come in potentially and the new owner doesn't want to keep him past 2023 but at the very least he can get his hands on Sam Howell and do to Sam Howell what he's done with all these other quarterbacks I think it could work out great even if Pat Shermer isn't our offensive coordinator longer than 2023 I think him just getting around Sam Howell can help a lot oh and before we end the video as well one last thing remember Ken Ken Zampese technically does have a pretty good record of helping quarterbacks before he got to the commanders. Now, since he's been on the commanders, I don't necessarily blame him for all of the quarterback struggles we've had because he hasn't necessarily been given the best talent. I think if he were to get his hands on a Sam Howell, he could work out because Carson Palmer, Andy Dalton, and even Baker Mayfield had their best seasons as Ken Zampese, their QB's coach. Baker Mayfield easily had his very best season under Ken Zampese. The record that I talked about earlier that Daniel Jones almost could have broken, Baker Mayfield broke broke that record I believe under Ken Zampese as QB's coach so you combine Pat Shermer with Ken Zampese I just don't see how Sam Howell wouldn't work out they're both QB whisperers they both get the best out of their quarterbacks that they've had quarterbacks that they've touched had their best seasons under those guys you put them together I think it's unfair honestly if Sam Howell doesn't work out under that then it's Sam Howell's fault and it's time to go get Caleb Williams Drake May and Ken Ewers plain and simple but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything let me know how you feel about this whole situation with our offensive coordinator list are they serious about the two to one run pass ratio are they serious about trying to get pat Shermer? were they serious about jim caldwell and how do you feel about sam howe potentially being under the tutelage of a ken zan piece and pat Shermer combination i think it's a great idea but let me know how you feel about it do you have any better ideas out there that you would prefer and all of that type of stuff and of course i appreciate all the support man Please leave a like on this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. I appreciate all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Name is scrolling on the screen right now. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.